Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sounds of the Valley. I'm your host, Nathan Blazer. Tonight, I have some very special guests with me. I have the Tyler Lustig Confluence. Uh, Tyler Lustig, if you might remember, uh, was on an earlier episode of Sounds with Duo Vivace. Today, he is back again with a quintet for some wonderful jazz pieces. Uh, Tyler, I really look forward to getting to hear uh, everybody's works together, and we'll get to talk more about uh, who all is involved with this. Uh, some of you might be recognizing some, some very familiar faces from uh, some people who are very well known around town and get a whole lot of gigs. So, uh, very much looking forward to hearing all that. Get out of your way right now.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to the interview portion of Sounds of the Valley. Today, I have the Tyler Lustig Confluence with me. Uh, if you would all like to take a moment to introduce yourselves, uh, we have a couple familiar faces, some who have not been on the show before. So let's start with you, Tyler. My name is Tyler Lustig. I am the leader and composer and piano player for the Tyler Lustig Confluence. My name is Will DeBlay. Um, I play the electric and acoustic bass in the Tyler Lustig Confluence. My name is North Skager. I play the drums. My name is Jan Hora. Some people call me DJ Yanni Trumpet. And I just love playing with these guys. I want to do it every day of my life. My name is Dr. Aaron Hedenstrom, professor of uh, saxophone and jazz studies here at the university. I play saxophone. Awesome. Well, safe to say, I think we have a very uh, Eau Claire star-studded cast, as I think most of you, as far as I've been aware, uh, do a fair bit of gigging. Uh, yeah. So I think that leads to a good question is, well, how did you get to the point where you can do a fair bit of gigging? What is the story? How long have you all been a musician? Something like that. Big, big question, I know. Uh, well, I... Uh, started taking piano lessons way back in like second grade. Um, I actually only did that for about three years. Um, going into middle school, that was kind of more my time to like experiment, try a whole bunch of different things. Like I was in, like play acting with the Eau Claire Children's Theater on a production of Susical. That's just like a whole fever dream <laughs> um, in my past. Um, doing like sports and stuff in middle school. But as I got into the um, the band program at Eau Claire Memorial High School, I was, um, I was very intrigued by a lot of the harmonies that were present in, in a lot of the charts we were running. Um, in particular, one that stands out to me is Chick Corea's Spain. That one really grabbed my attention. Um, at the same time, I was getting into a whole bunch of different music, like the likes of um, Radiohead and Robert Glasper, um, uh, and just discovering a lot of that music. I was also particularly inspired by the, um, the upperclassmen um, who were at uh, Eau Claire Memorial at that time. Like for, like for me, any kind of space like that where everybody's making music, um, the old kind of nurturing the young in that respect, like that was really inspiring uh, for me in terms of moving forward through the program, getting older, and seeing where the, all those people were going as they got older. It was like I was, I was kind of starting to get an idea of maybe doing this for my career. Um, so basically, um, long story short, I ended up going down to UW-Madison for my undergrad degree in music education. Um, to kind of put, it, put some perspective in when I was doing that, I was doing my student teaching in spring of 2020, so a couple things got a little weird there. Um, but luckily at the beginning of that semester, I had um, applied to Northern Illinois University where I, was, where, where I was admitted and also was granted an assistantship. So I just completed that last May, actually just about a year ago now, and I've been playing in the Eau Claire area um, with all these fine fellows and others ever since. Will, you want to yeah, take a stab um, at it? Yeah, when I was a real little kid, um, I had an uncle named Zeke, and uh, he was a professional dobro player. And he came to town with his band. Um, he was on tour a lot, but um, I remember seeing, seeing his bass player, John, playing the upright bass, and ever since then it kind of just like had that spark in me. And, my high school didn't have an orchestra, so the best thing, like the closest thing I could get was the tuba. So I learned the tuba, and then eventually my uh, brother-in-law lent me an electric bass. So I started taking lessons and um, kind of decided I wanted to study music and uh, went to UW Sheboygan, go Wombats, uh, for my first two years and then transferred up to Eau Claire. I graduated here in 2020, um, met some amazing folks and just learned music so hard, like, it was very intense, but I, I gigged, a, gigged a bunch, just said yes to everything, and eventually started making a lot of money doing it um, compared to the zero dollars I was making before. You know, <laughs> I'm not rich, but you know how it is. Um, but I said yes to everything, and uh, I learned, I think I learned more on the gig than anything, but uh, yeah, I've just been kind of following that path ever since I was a little kid, so. Nice. Yeah, I, uh, every time I'm asked, what's your story, I always have to go back and think, when did I actually start? But sometime during elementary school, I started on piano or guitar, played a little bit of those. But then uh, when I was 10, I remember uh, picking up the drums. My dad was a garage drummer 
uh, back in the old days before I was born. Uh, so I always had access to his old kit in the basement um, and would play around on that. And that instrument in particular really spoke to me and I continued to pursue that. Um, I grew up in North Dakota, which doesn't have a lot of people and uh, therefore doesn't have a lot of live music. So I didn't experience a lot of that growing up, but I did uh, play video games and watch a lot of movies and that music um, really spoke to me, uh, music for media. Um, and I like to per pursue that kind of uh, musical endeavor and get into it that way. Um, and then when it came time to go to college, pick a school, um, I was doing some research online, came upon UW Eau Claire, uh, met with uh, Mr. Robert Baca, who's become a great mentor, played with the likes of Buddy Rich, which is just insane uh, for me as a drummer, um, and studied with uh, Dr. Jeff Kroll for percussion and Dr. Brian Claxon for a drum set, who also have been uh, really, really great to learn from. Uh, and then ever since, we've just been uh, hanging out in Eau Claire. Uh, graduated last spring um, and playing with all sorts of bands around the Chippewa Valley. We've got a few. Um, there's a party cover band that Will and I both play in, as well as a video game cover band project we have going on and an original project called Sweater People. So there's lots of stuff going on. What? what are the other two bands? Oh, the other two bands? DLC is our video game cover band, and then the, uh, the cover band, the... Uh, pop, funk, rock, cover band, That's party band, band <laughs> yes, is Uncommon Denominator. <laughs> Will and I play in that. So I have been a trumpet player for about 16 years and probably musician for about six of those years uh, when I started going to school here and really diving into music. Uh, in high school, I played a lot of sports, um, took some lessons starting in middle school on the trumpet. And of course, my mother was very musical. She was an opera singer in Europe for 15 years. And a lot of inspiration just to go after music uh, came from her. And my dad loved playing guitar. And he had just an insane collection of records um, that we would always listen to. Um, and then UW Eau Claire went to school here because my brother was here, found out about Mr. Robert Bach and the incredible music department here. Um, and that was just an incredible experience really taught me a lot, uh, got to a point where, you know, I just, as musicians do when they're young and in school, we just practice as much as possible. Um, and then eventually ended up getting a cruise ship gig before my senior year of, of college. That was, that was a really fun time. Played in a lot of other bands, played in Uncommon for a while. Um, many, many projects uh, going on. And in Eau Claire specifically, uh, we started many different jam sessions, and at one point my junior year, I think I was playing five or six nights a week. You know, oh, wow. maybe maybe not for money, but we did it because we loved to do it. Um, so that experience on the gig, as Will was talking about, is everything uh, when you're when you're young and just kind of making it happen, making your own opportunities. Um, what else? Oh yeah, then I became a wedding DJ. That kind of was kind of a fun thing. Learned how to do that from a local company, and then branched off and kind of do my own thing as a DJ Yanni trumpet, <laughs> as I talked about. And also love pursuing lo-fi jazz, um, just kind of chill beats, you know, music to study to, as the kids are saying nowadays. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, but now I'm here. I just uh, went through the Army School of Music. I'm an American soldier in the National Guard. Uh, I've been playing uh, taps for funerals, uh, part of the Honor Guard as well, um, kind of d doing that during the day. And I want to teach a lot more at night uh, to younger folk and uh, keep playing gigs around town. And I'll be here for a while. Got a wife, two dogs, a house. So we'll be here for a while. <laughs> All right. Well, I've been doing this for a few more years than uh, these <laughs> young fellas. But um, I uh, grew up in St. Paul and uh, had the fortune of uh, being part of a a musical family and having lots of musical relatives um, and uh, when I was growing up I had a lot of wonderful mentors uh, teachers and mentors in the Twin Cities uh, people that were you know running summer camps and teaching uh, different scenarios in in different kind of extracurricular uh, groups so I, I think that was a great way to meet some like-minded young musicians. Um, when I was in high school, I started some bands with other people that I, that I knew, peers of mine from high schools around the Twin Cities metro area, and we would just gig and 
So I've been gigging since quite a long time ago, but um, then I uh, got three music degrees that over the course of 10 years <laughs> that uh, the entire time I was getting those degrees, I was also playing professionally, composing and arranging music professionally, um, and doing a variety of other things. And um, yeah, so now here I am uh, teaching at the university here. Um, I spent the last six years freelancing in the Twin Cities as well before moving to Eau Claire last summer with my wife and two kids. Um, and uh, so that's uh, how I got here. Nice. Uh, I always like to ask kind of that question of how people got here, what was their sort of path, because on Sounds we have a whole lot of very different musicians on. Um, this has actually been one of our first seasons where we've got a lot more of people who have been more classically trained or gone to school for music. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting to hear how those of us that do that uh, get our path, given that you know the people that um, just kind of pick up the music and just start getting into it, they get rolling and starting things pretty quickly with getting into different groups and things like that. Um, and I really think that uh, an important part for all of our paths here was the second that we kind of almost took a little bit of uh, ownership in a way and started reaching out to other people and really trying to um, make connections and make music for ourselves and things like that. Um, speaking of reaching out to each other and all that, how did the Tyler Lustig Confluence form? What is the story? How, how, did, how did the name come? Why, why the Confluence? Uh, that's a good question. Um, We've all been playing in some way, shape, or form over the last few years. I'd say Aaron is the most recent uh, collaboration that I've had the... Yeah. Right. Yeah, most recent collaboration for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, but essentially, I uh, came back to the Eau Claire scene in the summer of 2021, kind of coming out of like COVID times and with like the resurgence of live music in the area. Um, I think the first place that I saw, I, I had certainly heard about North and Will with Uncommon Denominator and all of that, but I think the first place I saw you guys play was when um, the Clearwaters Bar and Restaurant was still around. Uh, some interesting times there. Um, but I, was, I was super interested in what you guys were doing because I was like, man, like, I'm so excited to see that. Because when when, right before I, um, I left Eau Claire to go down to UW-Madison, I, uh, I, I didn't find that there was... Um, a super deep scene going on at the time, but like ever since I left um, you, uh, Eau Claire in 2016, like the uh, the culture here in Eau Claire has just exploded. You know, like there's been so like so many new venues have opened up, so many amazing fresh collaborations going on. It's been so cool to watch. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I, I can't remember the exact order of things, but basically around then, summer of 2021, Jan North will and I um, were kind of in some separate groups. Um, I think there was at one point that I was in, I, I subbed in for Uncommon Denominator. That's when I really got to um, hang in with North and Will. Um, and then Jan and I have been doing some of our own projects um, with uh, an another group that we are in uh, called Triplet Threat. <laughs> or is it Triple Threat now? I, n I well. never on the, it's, <laughs> we, it, always, it always switches back and forth. We do all, all different kind of things. Um, and then, yeah, Aaron is a more recent collaboration for me. Um, I, will, I will shout out Jan here, because Jan is a bit of, kind of my hype man. I'm like, man, I'm just looking for some more saxophonists to play with in the area. And Jan's just like, dude, just reach out to Aaron. Like, he's just a cool guy. I'm sure you guys would get along. I'm like, OK. I just reached out to Aaron one day, and we just like, kind of, I went over to his place. Dr. Head and Dr. <laughs> yes, you're right. Um, so I went over to Dr. Head and Strum's, uh, house, and we uh, played some, we just had a jam, played some of my tunes and had a good time and uh, now we're doing this collaboration so everything's kind of come together with that. Um, so that's kind of how the, uh, we has kind of come together through different ways and means and different kind of um, coming, to to coming together of different paths. And that's where the name uh, Confluence comes from. Um, the uh, last track that you will be hearing tonight is entitled Confluence. Um, and I wrote that I wrote that tune at the very end of 2021. Um, I remember it was like the dead of winter and I'd picked up, I'd actually picked up a brand new synthesizer that I was just kind of finding some things on and just figuring out how to use. And it was just a very short little, um, little chord progression that I threw together. It was a very simplified version of what you, what you hear on, um, on Confluence itself. Um, 
but basically, I, I kind of decided to write, uh, like, finish writing that tune as sort of, sort of a love letter to the to the Eau Claire area, um, naming it Confluence to represent the coming together of the Eau Claire and Chippewa Rivers in the middle of downtown, um, right by the Pablo Center. Um, which, incidentally, at the Pablo Center, we, as the Tyler Lustig Confluence, will be recording our debut album at the Pablo Center at the Confluence, as the Tyler Lustig Confluence, recording the tune Confluence. So there's just, just a lot of coming together of different paths and means and rivers, which is, there's just a bunch of different deep meanings in there with the word Confluence. So all things coming together to create something bigger than all of us, you know? Interesting. Can you uh, tell us anything more about this uh, upcoming album? Um, whatever you'd really like to share, uh, I'm very excited to hear about it. Sure. Um, basically, this recording project will entail compositions that I have written over the last few years, um, going back in uh, 2020. Um, that's when I, I, I was doing some compositional uh, endeavors before that in, in my undergrad, but around 2020 when I, like, kind of in the middle of the throes of COVID lockdown is where I started experimenting more with composition and kind of trying out some of the things that I learned from undergrad as I was progressing into grad school. Um, and just be like kind of being deep in that space that we all remember being in. I don't want to dwell too much on that. <laughs> but that's, and that's kind of what, the, what, what's, what some parts of this album will be about, is kind of about that time and what we're, and how, how we all went through that at the same time and how we've all grown um, from that. Um, and it's essentially, it kind of catalogs my journey from Eau Claire down to UW-Madison, down to DeKalb for Northern Illinois, uh, and then coming all the way back up to, um, uh, to Eau Claire. Just like my, my journey these last few years of meeting some amazing people, working with some incredible instructors and playing in some amazing places. Um, and then coming back up here to Eau Claire to uh, ex experience even more confluences of collaboration and musical enjoyment. A lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of confluence there. <laughs> uh, but no, that's very exciting. Um, I will definitely personally be keeping an eye out for that. Um, as we uh, sort of start to wrap things up here, um, any last things that y'all would like to plug? Upcoming shows, any other albums, any other groups that y'all are in? It's free game right now. Um, I can be found on Instagram at, at Tyler Lustick Jazz. You can also find my website at TylerLustick.com. Um, the Tyler Lustick Confluence will be playing a show at The Plus on June 2nd, Friday, June 2nd, time to be determined. Um, we will also be playing at the Clearwater Jazz and Art Festival on Saturday, August 26th. Um, also, time to be determined. And then that recording project that I had mentioned, um, we hope to produce our debut album from that. Uh, not exactly sure when that's going to come out at this point, because we're going to hit the studio for that in about a month. Um, but hoping maybe late summer, early, uh, early fall, uh, essentially before the, end of the, before the end of the year, certainly. Um, otherwise, I'm involved in a couple different groups around town, one of those being Cat and the Hats, where we feature... Um, Kat Sherman, this amazing vocalist in town. She, there's, I don't think like, there's there's some amazing vocalists here in town, but Kat, Kat just does it her own way, and she's amazing. We typically feature Hannah Sternberg on bass and Jordan Cox on uh, the saxophones. He plays every single saxophone ever. He's incredible. Um, we will be playing at the Jazz Crawl this coming Friday at uh, the Children's Museum at 9 p.m. Um, because Jordan is otherwise booked up that night, you will get to see. DJ Yanni Trumpet, not as a DJ, but as a trumpeter <laughs> on, that, on that set. So he'll be subbing in for Jordan. Um, yeah, that's all that comes to mind at the moment. Okay. Any other plugs? Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you can find all of us next Friday at the Eau Claire Jazz Festival, uh, the Jazz Crawl, um, in some way, shape, or form, I, I, at least once or maybe twice. Uh, so check that out. Uh, it'll be a blast. It's always a great e event. Lots of food, fun, Is family. there a place <laughs> where people can find uh, information about the uh, Jazz Crawl? Uh, I think it's, what is it, ecjazz.com or something like that, or Eau Claire Jazz. So okay. the Eau Claire Jazz Festival has a, uh, a Facebook page, I believe, and also an Instagram page, and they have a nice map on there of downtown and a list of all the groups and where they're going to be playing. So you should be able to find that on there as well. I'm not sure the exact handles for them, but it's out there. Okay. Just wanted to be sure about that. <laughs> Pretty easy to find.
Any last things before we wrap it up? I gotta plug my Instagram too. <laughs> That's uh, Yanni Trumpet, J A N N Y, Trumpet, spelled like trumpet. Hopefully, you know how to spell trumpet. Um, also, my website is yanhoramusic.com. Um, I'm a wedding DJ, so obviously a lot of information is on there. Some different projects that I've been a part of um, in the past are on there, as well as some different highlights from the cruise ship and other fun stuff that hopefully more people can enjoy. I'm just checking out some of those videos. Uh, right now, my main thing is working with Tyler, and yeah, it's been a great time. So make sure to follow Tyler. And what's your website, Tyler? TylerLustick.com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As long as we're talking about our projects and doing social media plugs, we might as well plug ours. Will and I do a lot of the same stuff, so this counts for both of us. Um, but you can find uh, Sweater People online. We just came out with a new EP um, earlier in the year, um, so we're trying to advertise that a little bit. Uh, you can find that at sweaterpeople.org, also on Spotify and Apple Music and whatever you listen to. It's uh, Sweater Music Volume 1. Uh, Sweater People's also got a Facebook page, and we're on Instagram, at Sweater People. Uh, DLC, again, that's our video game cover band. We also have an Instagram at DLC underscore band, I believe. Uh, and then Uncommon Denominator, which was Volume 1's number one cover band in the Chippewa Valley um, for the last, yeah, three, I think it was three years. Um, Uncommon Denominator is on Instagram at Uncom Denom. That's Uncom with two M's, Denom with one M. So you can find <laughs> us there. Um, sweater people. Uh, we're in production of our second record right now, um, which is a full-length album, and uh, we're looking for filmmakers to work with. So if you're a filmmaker and you want to make some cool stuff, hit us up. And uh, everyone said amazing things. All I have to say is, like, go listen to the meters. It's good for you. <laughs> it's my message. Well, if I can mention just one more collaboration that I'm involved with. <laughs> There's so <laughs> many. It's mind. absolutely incredible. <laughs> we all have you so need much to going on. Check it's, that out. It's amazing. Um, uh, I frequently collaborate with Twin Cities guitarist Dean Granros. Um, you can usually find us playing at the Lakely or 200 Main. We usually try to play at least once a month, if not more than that. Um, Dean and I will actually be playing at 200 Main uh, this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, so we usually do some like, we take the jazz standards that many know and love and kind of put our avant-garde crazy twist on them. So it's usually a, a crazy fun time. So Go see live music every day if you can. Please go <laughs> see live music. I think that if there is anything to be gained from this uh, episode of Sounds, it is that there is live music all around and it's just a matter of you actually seeking it out to actually find it. Uh, as we wrap things up properly now, uh, after all of our many, many plugs. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, no, it's awesome to see all the plugs. Um, I would like to thank you all for coming on. I uh, am having an absolute blast with hearing all of the music that you all are producing um, and getting to have a small part of it with this is an absolute treasure. So uh, thank you very much. And we'll get right back to the music. Oh, 
was absolutely incredible, you, you all. You did such a wonderful job tonight. Thank you all so much for coming Thanks, on sir. the show. Uh, it's truly a privilege and uh, for all of us here, uh, both at home and at the studio, I think, to get to hear um, all the different types of music that we do. And especially, I think we're lucky this semester for getting the variety that we've had on. Um, so for one last time, for uh, the Tyler Lustig Confluence and for myself here at Sounds of the Valley, uh, thank you everybody for watching and I hope you have a good rest of your night.